When I awoke after the transplant, I could hear people in the operating room saying, what an amazing transplant. I woke up and I felt so, not powerful exactly, but felt so alive. He loved his family greatly. He loved his work greatly. And I think everybody who knew him walked away with a good feeling. In 1954, one of the first African-American surgeons in the United States, Dr. Samuel Lee Coons, pioneered life-saving advancements in the medical field when he discovered how to successfully perform organ transplants, thereby discovering a new frontier of modern medicine, saving countless lives and forging a future for African-American doctors. Life throughout the 20th century was an ongoing battle for African Americans. Although slavery was abolished by the 13th Amendment in 1865, racism still affected life in America. Racist practices granted white people better opportunities. Black ghettos consisting of impoverished neighborhoods with rundown homes sprang up in the first half of the 20th century due to increased housing prices. Furthermore, segregation in schools ensured that white children received a better education in their neighborhoods, while African Americans usually attended underfunded, overcrowded schools in distant neighborhoods. Although most African American children began their education, the majority were never able to finish. Often preteens had to drop out of school in order to add to the family income and were recruited for more dangerous jobs deemed unsafe for whites. By 1911, the majority of employed African Americans were uneducated and poorly paid. Little had changed by 1950 as few African Americans and whites held the same positions, though African Americans were paid significantly less. Despite these challenges, some were successful in making better lives for themselves and their families. One field that was particularly underrepresented by minorities was medicine. Dr. Samuel Kuntz Jr. would become a significant pioneer for African American surgeons. He was born on October 20, 1930 in Lexa, Arkansas. Kuntz was introduced to medicine at a very young age as his parents were forced to take the unofficial roles of nurse and midwife in the small town they lived in. However, Kuntz's true desire to become a doctor originated while growing up on a farm. One day, he came across an injured chicken and tried to heal it. This sparked a desire to devote his life to helping others, but first, Kuntz had to overcome several obstacles. Living in a small, poverty-stricken, segregated town, he was forced to attend a high school that inadequately prepared him for a future in medicine. Upon graduation, he applied directly to the president of Arkansas AM&N. The college's president accepted Kuntz seeing his goals and determination firsthand. After obtaining his bachelor's degree there in chemistry, he went to medical school at the University of Arkansas, where he was the first African American to be admitted. This is where his pioneering work began. After graduating in 1958, Dr. Kuntz then earned his master's degree. That same year, he married Grace Aiken, and later the couple had three children, David, Keith, and Ellen. Continuing his academic path, he took an internship at Stanford General Hospital and began surgical training. Stanford was the turning point for Dr. Kuntz. Having mentors such as Dr. Roy Cohn set him on a new path of transplantation, a specialty that he had never considered. As well as discovering transplantation, it was at Stanford that Dr. Kuntz and Dr. Cohn made medical history. After rigorous research, the pair performed the first successful non-twin donor kidney transplant. However, this was abnormal, so Dr. Kuntz moved to London to continue his research. After he earned a fellowship, he was able to complete his postgraduate degree at Hammersmith Hospital. Dr. Kuntz performed many experiments at Hammersmith, but soon moved back to Stanford after being offered the position of chief resident in the Department of Surgery. Using his research and the equipment made available to him at Stanford, Dr. Kuntz discovered the effects of methylprednisolone. When blood flow dropped below a certain rate, this drug was able to stop organ rejection and vastly increase the percentage of surviving patients. This groundbreaking discovery made the New York Times headlines a year later. In order to spread his knowledge to foreign countries, Dr. Kuntz temporarily moved to the Arab Republic of Egypt to take the role of a visiting Fulbright professor of surgery. While teaching, he also performed the first successful kidney transplant in the Middle East. After his return to California in 1967, Dr. Kuntz left Stanford to become the associate professor of surgery and chief of the kidney transplant service at the University of California, San Francisco. There, Dr. Kuntz had the opportunity to work beside many brilliant physicians similar to himself, such as Dr. Folkert Belzer, a veteran of organ preservation research. Dr. Kuntz joined Dr. Belzer and other researchers to create the Belzer Perfusion Preservation Machine, a machine capable of preserving kidneys and other organs for up to 50 hours, a remarkable advance in the transplantation frontier. 
However, transplantations could not be successful without donated kidneys. Many civilians believe transplantation to be unethical and immoral, meaning they refuse to donate. So, on February 26, 1975, Dr. Kuntz went on the Today Show and performed a live kidney transplant. This resulted in a vast amount of changed minds and calls from people volunteering themselves to donate their organs. Afterward, Dr. Kuntz moved his family to New York and became the chairperson of the Department of Surgery at Downstate Medical Center in Brooklyn, and later the Chief of General Surgery at Kings County Hospital. By being near an impoverished area, Dr. Kuntz improved the equality of health care for African Americans. After four years of aiding the people of Brooklyn, Dr. Kuntz made medical history once again. He and his surgical team performed a successful kidney transplant on a three-month-old, who became the world's smallest and youngest transplant patient. In 1977, Dr. Kuntz went to South Africa to spread his transplant research. However, while there, he developed an undiagnosable disease. Over the next four years, he slowly began to lose brain function before passing away at the young age of 51. Since the 16th century, numerous researchers experimented with organ transplants. However, Dr. Samuel Kuntz truly revolutionized and modernized organ transplantation. Dr. Samuel Kuntz was not only remembered for his medical achievements, but also for his charisma, persistence, and true care for patients. His legacy is of a pioneering scientist, a, a great man, a role model, a trailblazer, and somebody who should be an example for future generations to follow. Commencing his academic career, Dr. Kuntz opened the doors to the integration of universities by being the first African-American student admitted to the University of Arkansas Medical School and the first African-American surgical resident at Stanford. Pursuing his ambitions, he overcame racial prejudice and barriers and thus was a pioneer for minorities. During his time at Stanford, Dr. Kuntz discovered the effectiveness of methylprednisolone in preventing kidney rejection. Subsequent medical professionals used Dr. Kuntz's research and discovery to improve the care of patients suffering from a variety of conditions. Additionally, Dr. Kuntz worked together with Dr. Belcher at the University of California, San Francisco to develop the perfusion machine, earning the transplant program an internationally respected reputation. Their work increased the number of successfully used donations and transplants. Surgeons were then able to send donated organs to different locations. The preservation of organs that this machine permitted also prompted surgeons to have more time to match tissue types of donated organs to those awaiting transplantation. Eventually, transplants became more successful because the organs were better matched to the recipients, which lowered the chance of rejection. This invention resulted in more lives saved. His work was not limited to the United States. He traveled the world informing others of his medical discoveries and performed the first kidney transplant in other nations. His accomplishments ultimately allowed for further advancements in the organ transplantation frontier worldwide. Dr. Kuntz's hard work, dedication, and discoveries in the renal transplantation frontier have inspired the creation of awards in his name. Many honor and continue Dr. Kuntz's efforts of increasing campus diversity, such as the Samuel L. Kuntz Diversity Fellowship, which is given to minorities who are aspiring surgeons. Motivated, Dr. Kuntz also labored to bring about medical equality for minorities. As a chairperson at New York Downstate Medical Center, he focused on bringing equality in medical care to urban areas like Brooklyn. Furthermore, he was significant in the development and establishment of the only lasting renal transplant program in Brooklyn. In addition to his trailblazing work in Brooklyn, Dr. Kuntz created programs for recovering transplant patients at Kings County Hospital in Stanford. Apart from expanding a wide range of frontiers for African Americans and advancing crucial medical developments, Dr. Kuntz created a lasting legacy with his respectable personality. People who knew Dr. Kuntz benefited from his charisma and genuine nature, which made them feel cared for, regardless of their identity. Many awards honor Dr. Kuntz's character, such as the Samuel L. Kuntz Humanitarian Award. It can be said with every degree of certainty that his scholarly activities and research have identified him as one of the world leaders in renal transplantation. During the 20th century, Dr. Samuel Lee Kuntz, a trailblazing surgeon, made advancements in both the medical and racial frontiers. His contributions helped revolutionize transplantation to become the routine surgery it is today and in turn saved countless lives. Simultaneously, he advocated for equality in medical care for all minorities, along with equal opportunities for surgeons. He should be remembered as a leader, a pioneer, and a man of true character.